One thing I've always enjoyed particularly, and I guess I was influenced at a very early age by my grandfather, who was a captain of industry, and um, I overlapped with him for about five years, and he taught me what he had learned as a penniless immigrant from Canada, building Wilson & Company, which was not just sporting goods, but also meat and pharmaceuticals. Uh, so making money honestly is one of my founding lodestones. Um, and I think one of the relationships that I've enjoyed most as a postgraduate board member, et cetera, et cetera, but uh, it's been advising students um, who are either there now or who are about to graduate about some of the things that they might encounter in the real world that actually um, the course material doesn't really teach you um, specifically how mm -hmm. to deal with complex decision making. So I take a a lot of satisfaction in advising particularly uh, attractive students as t to what they should be thinking about in terms of their careers. Mm -hmm. um, I have one now that's a confidential advisee who I think is going to be dynamite when he goes back to his home country uh, of Argentina, which I hope he will do. But in the space of a brief visit last year in Bologna, where I'm still on the Board of Advisors, um, I had the fun of comparing Russian literature, which he read ad avidly in some of the same books, so we were on the same page there. And he said, after just the second meeting, he said, don't you think I ought to start in on Russian? And I said, well, that's a good idea. I did that in high school. And I, you know, but I said, think about the economic future of your country and your area of expertise, energy, and the geography. And it turned out that he, he said, should I start Russian or should I um, go into um, some more Portuguese? thinking, of course, of big neighbor Brazil. Mm -hmm. And I'm overlaying this with my understanding of the energy and the energy development issues and the political attendant issues in Russia versus Brazil. And he said, no, please tell me what I should do, more Portuguese or Russian. And I said, how long do I have to answer? And he said, well, I have to make the decision in about two hours. And so I said, with some reluctance, I said, go for the Portuguese. The energy situation is going to develop much sooner and much faster in that country, which is in your area than it will in Russia, even though Russia has enormous possibilities. They also have political hand handicaps, which we're all highly aware of as historians mm -hmm. and even readers of today's newspapers. Mm -hmm. So um, so he's on that track. And when he comes back, oh, he, I suggested, you know, with your abilities, you could be in the media. I've advised a couple of students that they could really do some interesting things mm -hmm. in the media, which is woefully ill or underrepresented, particularly in the national television. And he thought for a minute, and he said, well, I hadn't really considered that, but yeah, maybe, you know, very articulate, good looking, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and then he added very modestly, he said, well, I do have a, weedy, a weekly radio program that I broadcast to Buenos Aires. <laughs> so here's where kids now are light years ahead of where we were. Uh, unexpected zigs and zags. I did some investing in somewhat exotic places, but where I knew people and trusted people, including Ukraine, which is now in the most terrible and understandable and predictable of meltdowns. Mm. 
Um, but some of the best business deals on the surface um, have actually gone upside down for reasons that don't have anything to do with logic or good planning. So you can't really know in advance. You have honest partners, first and foremost. You have good ingredients in terms of all of the essentials for a successful enterprise. But you don't know what's going to come mm -hmm. out of the woodwork in terms of <coughs> mm -hmm. arrows or thunderstorms or it's very true, yeah. Or American um, changes of climate. <laughs> mm -hmm. Of which there are many. Um, so, you've had like a really interesting career, and like you said, a lot of unexpected steps happen along the way, and you've found yourself um, in really good working relationships with prospective students and current students, and um, having this sort of the gift of being able to give back now. And thinking kind of in more just general terms and, and like one piece of advice given your lifetime of, of really interesting career, what would you, in thinking about like a current student today, what would you say to that person? What would you well, say would, that would be helpful? The first thing I tell, and I have several interns who are current undergraduates at American University mm -hmm. who help me with computer issues and so forth, and that is follow your heart. Mm -hmm. Do what you love most. And I've got a former intern who I've recommended who's now at Fannie Mae, and he was just good at numbers, and he just loved that. And that should lead you into positions, doesn't always, where you are happy in the work environment. You have a boss you respect, you have colleagues who you like mm -hmm. and who help motivate you, much as fellow students in a class as early as grade school can teach you more than the teacher. Mm -hmm. So I would say those two issue areas are the most important. Mm -hmm. Obviously it's important to make money, but don't have that as your sole objective or you'll be disappointed. If you can make money at the same time that you, as I have quite a bit in art, at the same time you're doing something that you would be doing for free, um, that's the double motivation mm -hmm. that, that, that makes the ultimate impact. Mm -hmm. Great. And don't be naive about changing the world, particularly some parts of Africa, which are for, have been in civil war meltdown mm -hmm. scenarios. I visited several with friends who were in the Peace Corps and so forth. Don't expect miracles. And Not in fact, way. prepare yeah. for um, some pretty ugly scenarios. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of places, this is maybe just my age now, but a lot of parts of Africa that I simply would not go to visit. And I don't mean that to be a warning, but and obviously kids are much more resilient now, the um, MA students who are in some of these programs. But um, don't take too many chances with your health and don't scare your families. <laughs> mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I'm not just saying that in a sentimental mm -hmm. way. I'm trying to be realistic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, great. The other issue yeah. area that I have talked to, mm -hmm. particularly some Canadians about, is the importance of water as a commodity. Mm -hmm. Not as a right, which the Canadian government policies have tended to veer off in the direction of, but as the most valuable single commodity, bar none, in the history of the world, particularly now, far more than gold. And to the extent that um, uh, students, both in the school and later, can develop expertise in that area, such as the use of glaciers melting from the bottom with pure drinking water as they are in Iceland, or are all over Canada and the water is running off 
without being used, that's an area for the future. So mm -hmm. I think everybody's, particularly in their 20s and 30s, should be thinking not just about the immediate horizons, but about the long-term uh, importance of the areas that they're in, like green energy and natural resources, particularly water. Mm -hmm. That's great. Well, thank you so much for spending some time with us today, and um, wonderful career. Thank it's been you. Fun. Okay. Many different ones. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Thank you.